Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We have a solar storm that is inbound to the Earth right now at this moment in time. You see these two plasma filaments that launched from the sun yesterday. They are now moving through the interplanetary medium and it's expected that they hit Earth around April 16th or perhaps even into April 17th universal time. Convert to your own local time zone. And this is expected to result in a G2 geomagnetic storm according to official space weather forecasters. I would say that this is likely to actually give us a G2 plus storm. I wouldn't be surprised if this double combination of these two plasma filaments destabilizing gives us a G3 storm as a result of the energetic conditions which are currently active here on Earth. The reason why is that our ionosphere is charged up more than normal because of these very active sunspot groups right there which were basically loading the overall global electric circuit here on earth with a lot of energy because of their continuous flaring so this is also making it look likely that we are due for some increased earthquake activity over the next few days and perhaps up to a week because right now sunspot numbers have just dropped precipitously because this group has rotated off of the western limb there is an increased risk of a solar energetic particle event happening as a result if they decide to flare the flares only kept getting bigger and when you have a charge up the ionosphere and then all of a sudden that solar energy input decreases that is when we start to see these earthquakes pop off and so there's an elevated earthquake watch at this moment in time and we have these solar storms coming in in just about 48 hours here we have our C3 coronagraph view of the sun, which allows us to see the solar wind outflows from the solar corona, the most highly charged and high temperature part of the sun. We see a first plasma filament there. Check out that second one though, directly square onto earth because we see that full halo launched from the sun directly towards us. So that is expected to hit us around the 16th or maybe even into the 17th if it's a little slow. I think it's more likely to be late on the 16th or early 17th universal time because this is a fairly slow velocity launch as we see and it's going to have to compete against the existing solar wind plasma and so that causes it to slow down a little bit. But if there is a little bit more plasma density in front of it that is going to then pile up and create a bit more of a shock when it does hit us. So there is that to think about as well. And at this moment in time, the ionosphere is pretty well charged because we've had a lot of solar flaring from the sun. Let's check it out. Here we have our 131 angstrom view of the sun going from the 10th to the 14th. So a little bit of a longer time frame, specifically because I want to show you the activity that this sunspot group here has had during that length of time. Because starting around April 11th, it really increased in its activity. So you'll notice at the beginning of this video, it's growing, but it's quiet. And then it really starts to explode with activity. And so we started to go from low C-class activity to high C-class up to low M-class. And then actually today we had the biggest flare of the bunch, a M4.2 flare. So we're getting closer and closer to X-class flare territory. And now it is at the western limb, which is the point where the sun connects to Earth's magnetic field due to Parker spiral dynamics. The, the sun emits this interplanetary magnetic field due to the solar wind but out in a spiral and so it's the western limb that actually naturally connects to the earth magnetically and so if you have a big explosion from the western limb or even slightly behind it you can often get really powerful solar energetic particle events like proton storms and so that is an increased probability and keep in mind the planetary geometry we are looking at the sun like this but we have venus more off to the side and then mercury even further over so that sunspot is sweeping by all three planets first earth then venus and then mercury and so there's that planetary geometry to keep in mind too as it started to sweep through them look at how much more active it became but the reason i'm really highlighting this other than the increased probability of a solar energetic particle event also over the next few days in addition to the solar storm impact is that this has been releasing a lot of x-ray flux which is already increased by about two to three orders of magnitude 100 to 1000 x from solar minimum to solar maximum and this charges the global electric circuit so the flow of energy around the world is already greatly enhanced during solar maximum as compared to solar minimum that 12 year cycle but then you get things like this that increase that base load and that is overall driving more energy flow through the global electric circuit. And I think that is likely to A, give us a more powerful geomagnetic storm 
and it's also possibly going to result in some high magnitude earthquakes. Here's a data product that I created showing the connection between solar activity and earthquakes here on Earth going from January 1st to April 13th of 2025. And specifically, we're looking at daily sunspot numbers versus total daily earthquake energy release for all earthquakes globally, magnitude 4.5 and greater. This is measured in gigawatt hours. And so that Y axis is over here, logarithmic scale. So it's important to keep that in mind. This is a 10X increase, 1, 10, 100, 1,000. 10,000. So for example, this peak there on the 28th of March is much, much, much more energy than these moderate to low periods there. The other Y axis is our daily sunspot numbers there going from zero to 250. And we have our date here on the bottom going from January all the way to April. So what I want you to notice is first the rhythm in sunspot numbers on the earth facing side of the sun. We have high sunspot numbers and then those rotate out and we have a little bit of a drop and then we see this regular rhythmic pulse in sunspot numbers. And these lows or the descending phase coming down from these peaks often as you see have these big jumps up in the overall energy released from earthquakes globally magnitude 4.5 and greater. And because of the way earthquake energy scales every magnitude jump up is 32 times more energy, you capture the vast, vast, vast majority of the total daily energy for earthquakes using magnitude 4.5 and greater. It's a lot harder to crunch all the data for the small earthquakes, which effectively don't add up and fill up the pot. So here we see, look right there, we're during a descending uh, cycle, sunspots are rotating out or they're disappearing. We get this jump up there. And then look, even right when the sunspot numbers go up, this is early January, we see that earthquake activity stalls out and then starts to go down again. Boom, another spike right there. Um, here, you'll see a little bit of a decrease in that correlation. We did get sunspot numbers to go down. We didn't get a huge spike in earthquake activity, but it's more than made up for it on the next one because here we see that descending phase and this massive 7.6 earthquake struck off the southwest coast of the Cayman Islands shot up the, the gigawatt hours significantly, going from like maybe 20 or 30 or so up over 1,000. That's like three, 4,000 right there. So here's another spike during the minimum. Here we see a huge global seismic burst. And then just here yesterday, we had a magnitude 6.5 and we see that sunspot numbers have been going down. So what are we looking at here? Sunspots in general have more flux to them, energy flux, and they release a lot more x-rays. That's why there's a lot more x-ray radiation from the sun going from solar minimum to maximum because during minimum you don't have sunspots, during maximum you do. And the uppermost part of Earth's atmosphere, the ionosphere, absorbs all those x-rays because they're very high frequency vibration of light and you have plasma in the ionosphere, about 1%, and it just sucks up those x-rays. It grabs on all of them, they don't really reach the surface or the deeper parts of the atmosphere. And this charges the ionosphere and creates strong electric currents, which induces strong electric currents called tellurics in the ground surface. And there's a lot of evidence, uh, and just in general, good theory about how these electric currents passing over faults can cause them to rupture. Well, you get the charging from when there's a lot of sunspots and then what at least this limited data set for 2025 thus far brilliantly shows is that once that energy starts to pull back from the sun, that is when the earth energy is able to release from the earth because when there's active loading of the energy, it doesn't seem to really trigger these faults to rupture or at least just in general increase earthquake release and energy but it's during that descending phase or during the minimum phase that you get that. And there's other, this is a, a, a simple understanding, there's other things as it relates to solar activity that also influence earthquakes. Because for example, we had the biggest coronal hole in like 10 years show up on the earth facing side of the sun here. That's why sunspot numbers drop so precipitously because it took up so much of the sun. You don't get sunspots within a coronal hole. That gave us a G2 storm and the solar wind parameters dropped anomalously. Like the density dropped to below 0.2 particles per cubic centimeter at times, which is way, way, way anomalously low. Normally it's like 5, 10, 15. If you go under one, you're in like strange territory. So we had unusual solar wind characteristics afterwards Look at all the earthquakes that popped off, the highest being that magnitude 7.7 .7 in Myanmar, Burma. And then there's also the aftershock. There's other magnitude 6 earthquakes that occurred that day. 
boom, that was the highest value that we had. And we see that that continued all the way until sunspot numbers basically started to climb up again. A new loading phase started, earthquake activity dropped, and now that sunspot numbers are going down, we're seeing this spike. So I'm calling this out because we are going to be in this sunspot period low for a while before we start to climb up again. We don't really have anything super active about to rotate in. So we have a few days before we really start to climb up again based off of this periodicity. And I think it's possible that we're going to see more high magnitude earthquakes during that time frame. We already had the 6.5 yesterday, just north of New Zealand. And so just be alert that there could be some more high magnitude earthquakes that result. And that coronal hole is very likely to give us a second sweep around the end of April. So in about 10 days, actually, it's going to be earth geo effective if it survives got bigger each time. And so you could see another global seismic burst like this because of the high speed stream impact and the way it alters the solar wind. So this is some really compelling data. I'm going to make this data for 2024, 2023, and you know, for all the years going back quite a lot. Just so we see this clear connection. We're at a sunspot number low right now. And we know that these sunspots here, right? This phase right there did give us a lot of X-ray flux because of that one super active sunspot 4055, which is basically boiling the whole time. And so you can have sunspots and not have increased, that much increased X-ray flux, but this time we did. We had significantly increased base load X-ray flux because of sunspot group 4055 which means it's more likely than not that we are going to get more earthquakes because of that charged up global electric circuit. It's also more likely than not that this solar storm coming in is going to be uh, more amped up than normal. And perhaps the two of those working together are going to trigger something. There is some evidence that earthquakes can respond to like a coronal mass ejection impact. Though the strongest evidence is for coronal hole high speed stream impacts. But still, you get an energy shock and things just become more unstable. That's a little bit of a heightened alert scenario. So that is what's happened with our Earth as it relates to earthquakes and soil activity for all of 2025. And I think that we have a lot more of this to come considering solar maximum goes all the way through 2026. And a friendly reminder that I have a whole bunch of holistic wellness products intelligently designed to help you manage and work with these increased energies at this time on my website at wildfreeorganic.com slash store. There's a link in the video description. For example, spirituality is a wonderful four ingredient all organic herbal tea blend. This is purple lotus flower, passion flower, chamomile, and mugwort. The four of them work together synergistically in an absolutely beautiful way to help you rest and relax more by activating your parasympathetic nervous system. Most people are already too stressed out. This helps to cut down the stress, the pain, the inflammation, but it also connects you to your spiritual body and enhances your connection to your unconscious where a lot of energy resides. And so it potentiates dreams, makes them more vivid, even lucid. If you drink this consistently, you may even get precognition dreams. That's my personal experience. That's why I made this tea blend back in 2022 because I was looking for the ultimate dream tea and well, here it is. And so it works really well, especially when you have heightened geomagnetic activity because that already enhances dreams. So that's excellent to have on hand. There's also, for example, earthing shoes, uh, which help you to manage and balance your bioelectric energy. So these are the men's earthing shoes. These are the women's, a cozy slip on. They're all leather. This is a thick leather sole and it has zero toe drop, a wide toe box. And so they are excellent at just improving your overall foot health. They're basically the, like the best minimalist barefoot shoe out there, but they're also an earthing shoe because this is leather. The entire footbed is conductive and they are just incredible for helping you to stay grounded more often. Barefoot is best. I will always say that. Make sure you go outside and you do some barefoot grounding if possible. But if you're worrying about bees in the garden, you don't want to step on one or you want to be grounded while you're out and about on the town doing chores or running errands, then these will help you with that. So these are excellent, available on the website. If you want to even go like hiking or do exploring or you're traveling, like boots are the way that I go. And so these are the earthing boots. These are the best on the planet. And this is also like a hemp stitching on the bottom there. They put this tread on all the shoes for increased grip and traction. So those are amazing. We have the sandals coming out very, very soon. So subscribe to the channel to make sure you stay informed as to what is happening with the sun and then also with the business. There's a lot that is going to be happening there as well this year and next. Very excited to share 
all these future things with you and wishing you the best with this solar storm impact. I'll keep you up to date. That is what we have right now. We also do see these coronal holes on the sun. And so we could see a little bit of increased solar wind volatility as a result of that. But in general, the big thing that we have right now is this solar storm impact. We have this stronger ionosphere and potentially we get some more high magnitude earthquakes like magnitude six plus. So that's a possibility. We just had the magnitude 5.2 in San Diego. I did the live stream on that. An additional report for that is that I took a nap just a little bit earlier and during my nap, I had a dream that there was more earthquake shaking. I was like slapping myself in the dream to like try to wake up because I was just like, this is real life. Like the, you know, the whole building is shaking. It's getting stronger. I need to get out. It is just a dream that that wasn't an actual earthquake follow up. But it was interesting that we had this earthquake this morning, which I felt. And then I took a nap and I had this really powerful earthquake dream with more shaking. So. Just uh, you know, relay my, my personal experiences with you. Uh, wishing all of you well. I'll see you all very, very soon.